Today wow. we are reading from Sri Sri Vilap Kusumanjali, Kashila Raghunathas Kuswami, verse 22. Oh, Shashi Mukhi, moon faced girl, after you bath, after your bath, may I gently and carefully wipe the water from your tender limbs with fine towels as the borders of your fish-like eyes joyfully move in all directions. <laughs> And then, with goose pimples of ecstasy on my body, after covering your hips with a red silken petticoat, may I cover all your limbs from your head down with an incomparably beautiful blue sari. Oh, Amen. Yeah. Oh, Shashi Muki, moon-faced girl. After your bath, may I gently and carefully Wipe the water from your tender limbs wow. with fine towels as the borders of your fish-like eyes joyfully move in all directions. And then with goose pimples of ecstasy on my body, after covering your hips with a red silken petticoat, may I cover all your limbs from your head down with an incomparably beautiful blue sari. Yeah. You see the beauty of intimacy and intimate relation. Why they are fortunate manjaris? Because they are very intimate service to me. What you cannot imagine, you cannot think, that's a service. They are living all the time. And when it's possible, when my constitutional position is fixed there. What you will say, this is Jnana Mishra Bhakti. What you will say, this is Karma Mishra Bhakti. Or what you will say, is a Shuddha Bhakti. Can you explain about this three Gaurasundara? What is the meaning of Jnana Mishra, Karma Mishra, Asuddha Bhakti? Raj. Radhe Radhe Guru, I don't know, you mean on Gaurasundara or? Gaurasundara. Okay, because I saw Gora Sundara is very close to you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Radha Radha. 
So Guru Dev is mentioning a lot of Mishras, mixing with attempt to attain devotion. One Mishra, one mix is trying to understand, to feel, to practice devotion through the jnana. But although this jnana is sometimes helpful, favorable, the, the jnana is not giving devotee opportunity to attain Shuddha Bhakti or Vishuddha Bhakti. And devotee who stuck in this, on this level of jnana, Misha Bhakti, is his destiny is actually liberation. Mukti. Different types of liberations are personal or impersonal, but no one of this goal will bring him to Vraj, and especially this Vraj Prem, and especially in the position of Radhadas. This is great, great obstacle. And only person who has mercy of pure Mahajanas, pure sadhus, can overcome these obstacles if he desires. If he is still very bound, very attached to jnana, knowledge, then it is very difficult. Maybe it's almost impossible. This is very serious thing, actually, that each devotee has to know, I think, from the beginning of his spiritual life. And all these Mishras, Karma Mishra, is attachment for fruitive activities. And very often we can see that we are trying to mix this desire for fruitive activities with our understanding what is a bhakti and what we want to be a bhakti. But in the same time, we are very, very attached to this karma or activities, fruitive activities. Sometimes we call it business <laughs> with the God. And this kind of attachment for karma mishra bhakti also will not bring us to Vraj, especially to the position of Radhadasi. Actually, this is great obstacles which can remove us from this goal. In the beginning, in a very subtle way, but later on, it is very difficult to come back again on the proper path. I'm speaking like this because I feel that Gurudev wants to warn us and that we have to be very, very aware what we are doing and what we are thinking that is a bhakti or what is really a bhakti. Anushilanam. Pure devotion without any hidden motives, deeply rooted in the heart, because Rupa Goswami also 
is giving this definition of what is the pure bhakti and trying to separate what is the pure bhakti, uttama bhakti, or shuddha bhakti, vishuddha bhakti, and what to speak about darshan, direct darshan. And he wants to give very clear differences. What is pure Shuddha Uttama Bhakti, which is performed from spiritual identity in spiritual relationship with full love, without any desire for jnana, karma, di, anavritam. Without any desire for karma, jnana, adi, it means and so on and so on and so on and so on. With yoga or with different mishras of karma, jnana, yoga, dharma and everything. No. And we have to be aware of it. And we cannot expect that we can be be able to use the mercy which we have if we are always mixing these things. Because mercy kripa is here, but our heart to be ready to receive without holes of jnana, yoga, karma, wrong association, and Adi, so, 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 so on, so on. And for this, it is required quite honestly, honest, sincerity of devotee. It's not a question of qualification. It's a question of awareness. What I want, what is obstacle on that path, and what I have to be very careful to avoid. It's not qualification, it's actually proper discrimination. But if the layers of desires which are different from pure bhakti are still very thick, then this kind of discrimination will be very difficult to awake. And the only solution is close, close relationship with sadhu in a very humble way. Always ready to, cor to be corrected and always ready to come back if we go astray, to come back on this very narrow path. So Bhakti Misha, Jnana Misha, Yoga Misha, Bhakti is not a pure Bhakti. And we will not bring devotee to the goal of Prema. It must be very clear, at least for me. Whatever we do, different stages of our consciousness are present, and that's okay. We cannot escape from that level of consciousness, but we have to surrender as much as we can to be properly guided so that we can correct ourselves and allow it to accept the correction of Gurudev. And sometimes these kind of corrections are very subtle in the hints. If you see this path, um, Lila, so we are normally meditating in Lotus. Right? Maximum we meditate in the face. But here pastime is not meditating in lotus feet or face. 
under the face to meditate. You can imagine how much intimacy Mandiri is feeling from Radhika. and how intimate she is with her Radhika. Meditate this past time. A beautiful explanation Rasika Bhakta gives when that day will come in our life that we can move for this meditation. In purity, and it's not possible without your constitutional position. Right. Read again. Oh, Shashi Mukhi, moon-faced girl. <clears throat> After your bath, may I gently and carefully wipe the water from your tender limbs with fine towels as the borders of your fish-like eyes joyfully move in all directions. And then, with goose pimples of ecstasy on my body, after covering your hips with a red silken petticoat, may I cover all your limbs from your head down with an incomparably beautiful blue sari. That's question, is what is intimacy? Intimacy, how much close I am with you, and you give me freedom to be there where nobody can go. This is very intimate and very relation in between Swamini, Radhika and his Majjari. No. Yeah. You're talking about intimacy. So maybe I can give a little example. Good day. Yeah, sure. So the verse is starting with O oh, Sashimuki. Moon-faced girl. When Radharani is called like that, Tulasi Manchuri is calling her like that when she is blooming up, when the face is blooming up, is shining, it's cooling like a moon. So when does this happen? Usually, when Radharani comes together with her beloved. So, 
in this verse we can hear that different kind of services are made. When can you see this ice so near that you describe it like this? When can you cover Swamini's body with a silken petticoat and then afterwards and this is actually the most near service may i cover all your limbs all your limbs every part of the body from your head down with an incomparably beautiful blue sari what does this mean You may say, yes, yes, it's a blue sari, and this sari is remembering Radharani towards her beloved. But actually, the service is more intimate. Because when Tulasi is covering the body, of Swamini, she is covering with Mohan itself because she is able to do that. She is giving Swamini the feeling directly that she is covered by her beloved fully from head down completely. That's why Sashimuki, the face is blooming up and shining. It's a very, very intimate seva. And then of course, also the manjari has goose bimbles because she feels the ecstasy of Swamini. Jai No. Can I also say something about the intense? Come, come near, not no, no. Sit there, sit there, it will work. <laughs> what I can feel about the intimacy, what is blocking us in this life to that kind of intimacy? There is some blockage. There is a big border, like a wall. And this is, for me, this is the false ego. This is me and mine. So I think I am this body. And so I'm only the one who is intimate with this me. <laughs> and if I break down this wall of the false ego in the material body and go in the mood and the ego of a manjari, then this wall will break down. And there is no more border between me and Swamini. Mm. There is nothing between us. Even the feelings are flowing freely that is meaning of intimacy so there is no hiding things everything is known between me and swami swamini i know exactly her feelings what she need because there is no border no me and mine it's only you and yours 
the only thing what is my is my service the mood of this this we have to get in this life also then we can break down the wall between and swamini and that is covered by that color that color with the color of passion that is rasi when the intense rati is there can see is there you see rati mandri guru was the rupa means always rati is the student of rupa rati is the way to reach to rupa not see physical identification only she like this rati is a student and rupa is the goal without rati there never can come rupa is not very serious he make this that red clothes she put on that meditate that and that is the rati of rati mandir this rati gurudev which is the ray of prem is removing all the desires material desires and desires for mukti liberation yesterday i listened Hey, Guru Charane Rati. This Rati from where we learn to understand, to understand all this is a Charane Rati. When I will be fixed myself in the custody of the day. Say is a uttam agati. What is uttam? This is the most highest thing. Why? Because this rati is going very important in our life. When we will develop deep understanding of my constitutional position. They come in here, man. Yeah. Well, then it comes to me. Why Uttamagati? Yes, this is Uttamagati. This is the highest practice when it brings. It will work there. 
then I know what is the taste of nothing. Rasa. Shri Rasa. Go on. In his Swarupa Vesh, Sri Raghunathas has a wonderful vision. May Maya, in the form of bodily consciousness, not take my mind away from the lotus feet of my beloved deity. Maya stops one from remembering the beloved deity. As a servant of Maya, I desire different things and my remembrance of you has gone far away. The scriptures and the great teachers have said that the Raga devotee must fix himself firmly on his Shvarupa Vesh. Yeah. That means it is very important to be fixed. Otherwise, Maya will always try to catch us in some way or other. The meaning this material body is Purusha. 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 Male. It's a covered female body or male body. When we come to my senses of body, I will become male. So we have to go to the female. And this is female body is a constitutional position. Without doubt, We have to practice. Why not we practice? Because we want to get the logic for that. Jnana, where is the sloka? Where is this written? I have to understand this. Then it will be right to me. So this is the problem that we not fully desire to reach it. Then Maya catches. Read again. May Maya, in the form of bodily consciousness, not take my mind away from the lotus feet of my beloved deity. Ah. Maya. Maya, I come to my influence of clutch of the external identification. Yeah. Maya stops one from remembering the beloved deity. Yeah. As a servant of Maya, I desire different things, and my remembrance of you has gone far away. Wow. 
love. The scriptures and the great teachers have said that the Raga devotee must fix himself firmly on his Svarupa Vesh. Yeah. Oh, Gurudev, this Bhakti Misha, Jnana Misha, Yoga Misha is actually the reflection of different aspects of Maya. Yeah. Because attachment to this, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. attachment to this logic, arguments, actually scriptures verses, is putting me away from remembering I am yours and you are mine. Yeah. Wow. So this is the point which you want and all our acharyas to point out that we have to be very careful about that. Yeah. Sadhu Sadhan. My friend Prairian always say. I like this. Sadhu, if you are a sadhu, then you have to be careful. What you are thinking, what you are doing, and what will happen with that. There are. Sure. Now comes one verse one, from one minute. Hmm. Uh, Pranavallava is telling something. You are listening on? This means we have to be very fixed and one point that, that we can avoid the influence of the Maya. She cannot catch us in any way. Not really. When I will, any time will identify my material body, that is the influence of my life. Jai Rati Gurdi. Yeah. I want to ask in this regard, what I experience is that it becomes more subtle. It's not only the external senses, it's uh, mostly what I feel in the, in the mind, in the subtle uh, perception, the structure that I have uh, taken shelter of that I think I am this person or this feelings or this perceptions, and it's very subtle. And I, my personal feeling is that on the deeper levels of approaching our goal, we need mercy to overcome it because it's it's so much in my consciousness that it's difficult to to even trace it. You are right. You are right. What is many of people say, when we research, what is my problem to remove them? That is the satna. And this is, nobody will see this. In Rag Bhakti, this is satna. That nobody will know what you are doing. But you are always in the practice. 24 7 to improve yourself. God, so much intense rag is there that you cannot keep yourself out of that thing. Right.
we don't want to think but which my mind goes there like radha rani say are sachi oh my friends i don't want to think of it i don't do see anything who is connected to krishna who remind me what i how to stop it and it is in the some way that i will try not to think of that i'm trying i'm trying but it's not possible to me what to do The scriptures and the great teachers have said that the raga devotee must fix himself firmly on his swarupa vesh. As written in Prema Bhakti Chandrika. Now, I will tell you my opinion about the path of spontaneous devotion. These words are the essence of the popular and Vedic teachings. If you follow in the footsteps of the sakis you will attain a spiritual body in braja in this way you will gratify your spiritual self nothing else but this can gratify the hearts of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. No one can attain perfection while being in bodily consciousness. Yeah. Gurudev, here is mention essence of popular and Vedic teachings which the essence is raga but it's not so popular again now i will tell you my opinion about the path of spontaneous devotion These words are the essence of the popular and Vedic teachings. <coughs> If you follow in the footsteps of the Sakis, you will attain a spiritual body in Braja. In this way, you will gratify your spiritual self again the scriptures and the great teachers have said that the raga devotee must fix himself firmly on his swarupa vesh now i will tell you my opinion about the path of spontaneous devotion. These words are the essence of the popular 
and Vedic teachings. If you follow in the footsteps of the Sakis, you will attain a spiritual body in Braja. In this way, you will gratify your spiritual self. Well, it's said actually, the essence is the following, the mood of Rajavasis. But this is the essence of popular and Vedic scriptures. So it means that this essence is hidden in the Vedic scriptures with so many jnana, yoga, karma activities which are popular. And the general people are missing this essence because they are, they are very attracted to these popular Vedic teachings for attaining Dharma, Artha, Kama, and ultimately Moksha. The Narottam Das Thakur is giving these warnings. When you read, when you come in the contact with Vedic knowledge, you have to feel the essence. This Sara. I'm sorry, this just. This is very hidden to me. Very hidden. Very. Yes. Rade, Rade. When you said this, Goranga Sundara, I also had this uh, inspiration because actually what we are missing in all these popular and Vedic teachings, what we usually miss is we don't feel, we just try to understand. And the gopis path is just the feelings path. They don't try to understand. They will go to hell if Krishna gets the food dust of them because he has a headache. No problem. They will give. They don't think, oh, because of the Vedic instructions, we will go to hell if we do that. They don't think. They feel. And actually, this is what we are not doing usually. We don't feel because the the path of materialistic uh, thinking is going to feeling less, to completely lose of your feelings, actually. And this is actually the goal of all these demonic people that we all become completely feeling less. This is the other path. It's going down. But here it's clearly said, actually, the way is to feel and how to be in your Swarup, which is condensed feelings. The only <clears throat> way is by feelings, but not feelings in the way to materialistic things, because this is not really feelings. Feelings are only connected with love, always. If we can understand that, that feelings are always connected with the soul. Uh, that means they are always spiritual. There are no feelings which are not connected to your spiritual identity. This is false ego. Then your feelings are covered by the false ego. So if they are going in a direction of something material, they are not real feelings. But in the case of the gopis, of course, this is real feelings, spiritual feelings. 
So the main point is what we miss in all these teachings. We don't feel them. We don't feel the goal. Where do they want to track us? Where do they want to push us? Where do they want to bring us? That's the reason why we need guidance of someone who can open this secret, which we cannot feel, which we, is in front of us, but it's hidden from our heart. I'm following this Rasika Sadhus in our own desirable mood will give us some hope, only hope. Thank you. No one can attain perfection while being in bodily consciousness. Although Sri Sanatan Goswami was the crown jewel of scholars, he still humbly inquired from Sriman Mahaprabhu in Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya <coughs> 19. Who am I? Why am I suffering the threefold miseries? I do not know what is my own benefit. I ask you, what is the means and what is the goal? For I do not know. Please tell me all these truths yourself. Sriman Mahaprabhu gave the following very simple answer. The constitutional position of the spirit soul is that it is the eternal servant of Krishna. It is Krishna's marginal potency and is both different and non-different from Krishna. The I, little, hmm. I just thinking about this different and non-different. What does it mean actually? So, like Radharani is non-different from Krishna, but of course she is different. You may say she is the Shakti, the inner Shakti. She is love in person. She is love of Krishna. So, you can say they are one, but actually in the same time there are two, because you cannot exchange love if you are not two persons. So, in this way, we are also, we belong to the spiritual family of Radharani and Krishna. We belong there, we are, in the same time, completely Uh, 
bind, bound, connected, but we are also not the same. Otherwise, we could not exchange love. Gurudev, maybe you can explain more about this difference. Oh, yes, it will be clear. The constitutional position of the spirit soul is that it is the eternal servant of Krishna. It is Krishna's marginal potency and is both different and non-different from Krishna. The living entity is Krishna's eternal servant, but he has forgotten that. And for that fault, Maya has bound him around the neck. But when the soul worships Krishna and serves the Guru's feet, the network of Maya will break and he will attain Krishna's lotus feet. But the Gaudiya Vaishnavas do not have their aspirations fulfilled unless they worship Sri Radha and they attain Sri Radha's lotus feet. Sri Raghunath is burning in the fire of separation from Sri Radha only. He has no other shelter but Sri Radha's lotus feet. I worship lotus eyed Radha. I remember the sweetly smiling face of Radha and I speak of Radha who is filled with compassion. In this way, there is no <clears throat> other shelter for me. Sri Goranga accepted Raghunathas as one of his own dear disciples by giving him his string of Gunja beads and his rock from Govardhan Hill, making Raghunath think. By giving me the rock, the Lord has offered me to Govardhan Hill. And by giving me this Gunja string, he has given me a place at Radhika's lotus feet. Yeah. Gurudev, do you want to explain us, elaborate a little bit? This is too much. Yet. This is our glory. Essence. More clear so it, than more clear than. 
is not clear still. Go on. When Raghunath thus remembers the Lord's mercy, he anxiously cries out for his Praneshwari. There is no end to this cry or grief, for these pastimes are eternal. A fortunate devotee can hear Raghunadas lamenting of separation on the bank of Sri Radha Kund even now. When the noise of the passionate material world abates in the deep night the pitiful ragini of these lamentations will resound on the stringed instrument of the sensitive devotee's heart again When the noise of the passionate material world abates in the deep night, the pitiful ragini of these lamentations will resound on the stringed instrument of the sensitive devotee's heart. Uh. By the grace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, One who became mad with love for Sri Radha was Sri Raghunadas Goswami. Sri Radha. And one who became mad with love for Sri Radha was Sri Prabodhananda Saraswati. They are wandering through Raja, crying, Where are you, Radharani? Radhe, Radhe. The, the sentence before was that uh, the rock the sounds, the transcendental sounds of the lamentations of Raghunath Goswami will resound on the stringed instrument of the sensitive devotee's heart. So I would just like to, so that instrument that is the instrument by what it can be heard is the heart, and the heart has to be stringed. I like this uh, poetical explanation because, as we know, when you play a guitar, for example, or any stringed instrument, if it's not in the right tune, it will not sound good. So, who is stringing our hearts? It's actually the Vani of our great sadhus, and of course, especially our Guru Manjri, who is the great um, orchestra master, 
mistress <laughs> of the orchestra of, of the mandris she is training and stringing our hearts so that uh, the sounds of the hearts are becoming favorable and attuned so that uh, in this tuning we can receive the, the, the beautiful ragas and we can become part of the orchestra with our heart. We can tune into the moods of Raghunath Das Goswami with our stringed and tuned heart. And that is taking place uh, in a sensitive devotee's heart. It is actually a stringing, uh, tuning, fine tuning, so that we can become part of the orchestra of Shrimati Radhika Stasis or fit in there in the first place. Yeah. So, so Suniti, we can say that this jnana, yoga, karma is disturbing this tuning. Yes, they will not allow, because I think as as long as as, as the there's attachment to this kind of mishra bhakti, this mixed feelings. Our hearts cannot be uh, tuned in the right way. It's like we try to string ourselves the kind of bhakti or the kind of feelings that we think are the right tunings. But in, in, in reality, they are distractions. And that is what I mentioned before, very subtle thing that I myself in the false ego, in the false conception of myself through the mixed bhakti, I cannot really, only by mercy, it can become, you know, pure. That's how I feel it. But it has to bang me all the time to get my own desires to string my own bhakti. <laughs> to I didn't know. Maharaj is telling. Huh? Narayan Maharaj is telling in hidden part that greed is important. When the greed is there, then devotee asks, if I have no greed, then Then he say, there is no mercy, because you have no greed. You need mercy to receive that. He ask other things, but not for the greed. Then he say, how? Oh, Will come to me, mm. then Narayan Maharaj, Gurudev will stand me. You have to go to Vaishna Guru Krishna to see it. In their mercy, can change our life. On this screen. Yes. But <clears throat> this line is still not going out of my mind. No. Why not greed is this? You would be asked, why not greed is this? Is it very simple? There is no mercy. Mm. So we did not come. And this and this Nahi Sukriti Lava Layer. Uh, 
No Sukriti, no mercy. No, no Sukriti, no mercy. So we need proper association to collect our yeah. Sukritis more and more, that they become condensed more and more. What Kishori is reading is, has to be underlined. <laughs> this is to practice. Go on. Gurudev, somehow now I want to repeat one, a few lines from last Saturday. We were reading from the verse 37 about the wild horse and the spotless horse. I feel what Suniti was saying now is, and you all about the greed, that this will be a good example also, remembrance from last week. Srila Raghunath Das Goswami opens his Abhishta Suchana Stava by writing the desire to serve the lover of the son of the king of the cowherd village is like a strong rider. May he mount the spotless horse of remembrance of Sri Rupa Goswami. This should be the desire of the wild horse of my heart. In other words, it is not good to have my own thoughts about how to attain Sri Radha's service. Those who are like bumblebees intoxicated by drinking the honey that oozes from Sri Chaitanya's lotus feet are always eager to attain the intimate service of Sri Radha. Yeah. Yeah. And they cannot attain it and experience it without following in the footsteps of the teachers of Raja Rasa, yeah. Sri Rupa and Raghunath Das Goswami. Yeah. Now I'm coming back to verse 22. When the noise of the passionate material world abates in the deep night, the pitiful ragini of these lamentations will resound on the stringed instrument of the sensitive devotee's heart. <clears throat> By the grace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, one who became mad with love for Sri Radha was Sri Raghunath Das Goswami, and one was was Sri Prabodhananda Saraswati. They are wandering through Braja, crying. Where are you, Radharani?
Our Raguna Das wants to see his Ishwari on the bank of her sweet Kunda. I want to see the jewel like young couple of Raja becoming tired of their extensive water sports in their beautiful lake, being served honey wine by their affectionate girlfriends afterwards in a sweet grove on the shore and making each other drink this honey wine. In his Swarupa wish, Sri Raghunathas dries Srimati's limbs with a thin towel. Obsessed with transcendental greed, Sri Raghunath calls Sri Radhika's bath water Paniya, which means drinking water. Not only the Yamuna's water is Paniya, but also Srimati's bath water. Why is this water coveted so much by the Kinkaris? Because Every drop is sprinkled with Radhika's Mahabhava. In topmost bliss, Tulasi rubs those drops from Sri Radhika's divine body with fine white towels that look like the white autumn clouds, drawing pearls, the drops of water from a steady lightning streak, strike. Radhika's body. Then she squeezes the water out of Swamini's thick tress of hair with another white towel. It looks as if the darkness the hair is grasped by the moonlight, the white towel, and is now crying of pain in the form of the water drops that are dripping out. While Tulasi wipes Swamini's limbs, Swamini's fish-like eyes blissfully look in all directions. Seeing the sweetness of Sri Radhika's eyes, Tulasi addresses her as Sashimuki.
or moon faced girl. When she does that, the remembrance of Radha and Mohan's pastimes in the Kunja is woven crisscross through her mind. Why? Once, during his love play with Sri Radhika, Mohan became enchanted by the beauty of Sri Radhika's eyes. And he eagerly kissed them, saying, Ah, oh, how beautiful your eyes are. Sri Radhika suddenly smiled when she saw that some of her kajal eyeliner got stuck on Krishna's lips after he had kissed her. Seeing her sweet smile, Mohan said, Oh, what a nectarian smile! And tasted some of this nectar by kissing her lips, leaving a black spot of gajal on them. This black spot made her otherwise spotless, divine, moon-like face glow like the ordinary moon that also has so many black spots. When Tulasi sees this restlessness of Swamini's eyes, she awakens the remembrance of this pastime in her mind and calls her Sashi Muki or Moon Faced Girl. In this way, the comparison between Sri Radhika's spotless moon-like face and the ordinary moon, which is full of spots, is successful. The word Mriduvanga tender limbs is nicely expa explained in Srila Rupa Goswami's Ujvala Nilamani. Yeah. Sri Rupa Manjari tells Rati Manjari, Look, last night, Sri Radhika lay on this bed of fresh jasmine flowers. But the flowers are not even slightly damaged. Rather, Sri Radhika's limbs have been bruised by the touch of these soft flowers. After squeezing the bath water out of Swamini's hair, Tulasi takes off her wet bathing dress and dresses her with a red petticoat on the buttocks and a blue sari from tip to toe. 
What a wonderful, loving heart service. Standing outside of the domain of prema, one cannot understand anything about prema mai data. Yeah. <laughs> See that. The oh, sun has passed. Mm. of the domain because we need Gyan Mishra. <laughs> Mixed with the, the sloka and knowledge. The sadhakas should learn by creeping from Tulasi how to execute these devotional services. Yeah. Tulasi puts on Sri Radha's blue garments just to remind her of Krishna. Wow. Because of its color. And then she puts a red petticoat that represents her passionate attachment to him, red being the color of passion on Swamini's buttocks. You see, is Rati. Passion is Rati. And second is Rupa. This is divine. Rati and Rupa. Every place it will move like this. This is divine. Reason can see Rati. Rupa is the Guru and Rati is the Guru Without Rati, we cannot reach to Rupa. So again here, blue and red, one is Rati, one is Rupa. If you have a goal to reach Rupa, Rati is part. <clears throat> you are mentioning wow. this Rupa Ragunatha, Guru and disciple or Guru Manjari, Guru Dasi. So in the Lila, Ragunath or Tulasi is completely depending on Rupa Manjari. Ruth Pamanjari is remembering her beloved thus friends and bring her to witness the Lila. 
in one verse, I think previous verse, when the bathing, this Abhishek is going on. Yeah. Rupa, Rupa is giving these pots to Rati. And Rati is pouring from these pots sweet water on Radhika's body. So in many cases, actually, <clears throat> Ruta, Rupa is teaching Rati, guiding Rati, and giving opportunity. Please come. Now you can massage the feet of Radhika, and I will massage the hands. And Rati Manjari is very often is waiting this sign from Rupa. And also this <coughs> Lila with towels is also something which Rati is not doing alone. She is happy to do it with Rupa together. And when they are together like two kinkaris, then they are overwhelmed with the joy, with the happiness to give the pleasure to Swamiji. So this is the close friendship, heart to heart, between Guru Manjari and Guru Dasi, for the pleasure of Swamiji. So I just want this, to say this. Yeah. The red petticoat is eight meters long and extends widely when it is folded around her waist. Eight meter long means Astyam. <laughs> it that is eight meter means it this distance is only eight part divided. So this is Asiam Seva. Three hours in one day is one yam. So eight meters means twenty four hours. The neophyte devotee should cast all sensual thoughts out of the mind yeah. and meditate on these services with a pure heart. Yeah. 
श्रीपद राम अनुचार्य says when meditation becomes intense yeah. it will flow like a stream free from all other disturbing thoughts uh, and that is a, it's flowing like a stream other will not disturb what we first disturb is always flowing like a stream not a stream we don't know what is happening and you start living in that flow that is creating greed na right? when we are living in that flow greed will naturally come when meditation becomes intense it will flow like a stream free from all other disturbing thoughts and yeah. the sadaka will experience it as a genuine transcendental perception yeah. lord krishna himself has also sung the glories of smarana in his bhagavad gita Oh Partha for the mystics who always remember me with undivided attention and concentration I am easily attained Wow According to Sri Sanatan Goswami Hari Nam Sankirtan helps the sadaka to achieve swift success in the practice of smarana yeah. as a result of sankirtan the joy of meditation increases and as a result of meditation the sweetness and the joy of sankirtan increases as a result of sankirtan the joy of meditation increases and as a result of meditation the sweetness and the joy of sankirtan increases in this way the two invigorate each other and it is experienced as if they are not two separate activities but only one although the door of swamini's dressing room is closed while she is dressing she still looks around restlessly as if she thinks i understand sundara beautiful krishna is watching me krishna mai means that krishna is inside and outside of her wherever she casts her glance she sees krishna remembering krishna lajjavati shai radhika shrinks out of shyness mm. shila dasagoswami writes 
<laughs> she covers her limbs with the silken garments of bashfulness. After this, Tulasi wants to pull the veil over Swamini's head. But just then her hands remain empty. The vision has stopped and she <coughs> does praise again to Swamini's lotus feet for devotional service. Sri Rasika Chandra Das sings. Listen to my petition once more, O moon-faced Rai. After I completed your bath, I will dry off your very tender body with soft silken towels. This will make you very happy and make your fish-like eyes restlessly go here and there. Then I take off your wet bathing clothes, throw them far away and cover your buttocks with a red petticoat. Then I will hang a divine veil from your head to cover your whole body. Don't let me down, give me this service so that my body will become studded with goose pimples of ecstasy. Thus ends the verse 22. Goose pimple of my body is also constitutional thing. Very beautiful meditation. What are the goose pimples going to have? The goose pimples? Means Without my constitutional position, it is not very good. People cannot come. I'm not possible. Why not come? Because my constitutional body is still missing to receive that. <clears throat> it should be totally pure and divine, then body will feel that question. Gauranga bolite have pulaka sarir, when it will become goose pimple, this is goose pimple, pulaka. Pulaka. bolite nan batini. Yeah.